I have set up and currently manage almost 100 Airbnb properties. Let me show you my newest one in Philadelphia. I think it might be my best work yet. And we're going to talk about exactly how much it cost me to set up this property. And it's going to surprise you. My name is Sean Rockageach. This is Airbnb Automated. And let me show you exactly how to host on Airbnb. Welcome back. Check that place out, right? So this is our newest building in Philadelphia. Um, this is one of three that we furnished all differently. We're setting up four more based on this design generally, and we're going to have 10 at this property with an option of 10 more. I negotiate really big leases with developers, owners. I also do some small deals with single family homeowners and small time landlords, but this is my favorite stuff the big deals. And so when doing deals like mine, when, you, when you're coming in with 10 or 20 or like me right now, 50 new apartments inside of 45 days, you need to come in on budget. So what I do is I get in my computer, I fire up all the places I like to shop, I of course get the floor plan, I do some design, and I buy massive amounts of stuff. I've spent over a half million dollars on furniture, can you believe that? But you'd be surprised how little I spent on this place. And so let me get into my Amazon Prime account and actually show you all the products we bought on Amazon Prime. And then I'm gonna kind of go back in time and add in some of the stuff that I already bought. All right, so let's fire up this screencast. Are you excited? I'm excited to show you this. This is really cool because um, I love this place. One of the best things about being an Airbnb host in multiple cities is no matter where you go, you're home. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, so by the way, if you're not an Airbnb host yet, I have a link in the description where you can become a host. I get a little referral from Airbnb. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more content because this is the only channel on YouTube that gives you just a relentless amount of value on Airbnb for free. We also have a free course here on YouTube. So enough plugs, let's jump in. The first thing you're gonna find kind of odd about this shopping list is there's these D-ring packs, right? So let me show you why. We didn't show you this in the tour. Um, this canopy bed is against so much window, isn't it? All these are down right now, but that sun comes in and comes in hot. So I created this curtain that you can pull off the wall and create kind of like a, like a blinder or a blackout curtain effect right next to the bed without me having to buy blackout curtains for this much wall or this much window. It would be an insane cost. So we've got artwork, we've got um, this golden marble theme with the building. Um, this bench, as you see here, was $215, is one of the more expensive items, but it works as kind of like an entertainment center and as an ottoman at the same time. And I like that design. It's something I just made up one day using a tufted bench under a, a wall-mounted TV. I like it. We do this in Richardson, Texas, too, with some of our properties. Real cool. So, you know, a lot of the art and the knickknacks can tend to be the more expensive thing because when you have a look that you're trying to achieve, um, you're paying for specifics. So uh, the gold medal piece up here is 50 bucks, by the way, for, for example. Now, you will be surprised that this king canopy bed was like 250 bucks, about as much as that tufted bench we just talked about. If you scroll down, you should see that the canopy itself is about $60. So you spend about 325 bucks and voila, you've got that. And this tapestry here that, that I put against the wall in my personal bedroom in Dallas, let me show you because this bed is very much similar. So in my personal bedroom, I have three pieces of artwork. Um, I got those dressers and nightstands, the ones in my room, I got those on Wayfair. 
And those pieces of artwork I bought at a place called At Home. So I was like pushing a cart around, spending my time buying. And that art total was probably like $250. Here, that was 20 bucks. Covers it, right? So the room darkening curtains and the wire hanging on the wall. We've got these little jars with the little white flowers in there. Um, and this budget includes buying like the, the clamp grip for cutting the wire, like little extra things that are like one off, may not ever need ever again, but it's hardware that we keep for later. So that was $1,007. I put this in an Excel file. We'll go to, the, to that at the end. Next bit, the accent chairs that I like so much, the tufted ones with the metal stamps, um, that's 271, about 288 after taxes and shipping. Then we've got the bar stools, they're 70 a piece. I bought some for multiple units, that's why you see a quantity of three. So these are $74 after tax. Um, the 10 foot couch that you see, you can probably see a bit of it in the corner, can't you? That is a 10 foot couch and the reason why I bought it was this place was so oddly shaped. I did not buy that couch until after my lease started. And if you watch my other videos, you'll know that that's a no-no. But this building, we're moving so fast and picking up 50 properties, it was really tough for us to do everything perfectly. So by the time I got the keys for this place and walked in, I had forgotten that this place has such an odd shape. Yes, it's midnight and I'm drinking coffee. I can't help myself. Um, one of you guys shared a meme in the, the host group. You know, you heard, heard of coffee, but what about seventh coffee? evening espresso. Uh, so this 10 foot couch was less than $500 after shipping and I bought it specifically because it has this really long corridor and I needed to do something with the space. So as you saw in the shot, TV to the left, bench to the right, artwork in the back and wall mounted TV. Um, the little white flowers, like 14, 15 bucks. We bought matching types of, of rug. So this is this Moroccan Blythe area rug and we've got one under the king bed and we have one over by the TV nook. Same design, just different size shapes. That's one reason why I like shopping online at like Wayfair or Amazon or Ikea because they have the same look in a bunch of different ways and it makes it really easy. If you shop at smaller stores, it's hard to get that specific. And one of the most expensive pieces of art was this wonderful white rose here. Is that a rose? I think it is. And um, no, it's not. It's probably a carnation. Uh, my mother would be so mad at me right now. We actually have a flower garden when I was a kid that we had to work in, like in Wisconsin when you have flowers for like two months because it snows the rest of the year. Um, but anyway, that's probably the most expensive piece of art, but the, the abstract gold halo um, at the end by the TV was also pretty pricey. Like I said, the majority of our costs here are artwork to make it pretty because we wanted this place to look luxe. Now, kitchen stuff. As you can see, many quantities, quantity five, 10, et cetera. I bought stuff for lots of apartments. So I broke this down, only the stuff that actually went into this apartment and we put it in to our Excel file here. So, doo -doo. accent chairs, like we said, bar stools, the various stuff, the multiple various orders we went through and this various kitchen one is the one we were just looking at, which is 132 bucks for the portions of this that we had purchased. So now, other various kitchen stuff, stuff that uh, you, you do not see there because we, you know, did not buy it in this order, we bought it in a previous order. Um, that will include things like the toaster um, and include, include the knife set, a Brita water filter, stuff like that. Um, also, it'll include the coffee for the coffee station, the tea kettle, um, you know, all those things to make that full kitchen. Um, the bedding for the king bed, it includes four pillows. We spent about $100 on our pillows. The comforters, duvet covers are 35 bucks a piece. The sheets are roughly 35 bucks a piece. So you're looking at about 220 there um, in just sheets and stuff plus $100 for pillows. Um, now the TV, if it was not free, which I get a lot of my TVs for free, you can too. We're gonna talk about that later. Um, but that TV is an Insignia Fire TV 50 inch. Got it for like 290 bucks if we paid for it. The mattress is a Hofish Balance X mattress. So it's like 350 bucks plus shipping and you know stuff on uh, Amazon Prime. So about 380. We bought that on a previous order because we buy a lot of stuff in bulk. Uh, various bathroom stuff like uh, the ironing board, the iron, the, the uh, shampoo, everything like that. Then you have your cleaning supplies. This only includes the stuff that you keep in your apartment. You need to keep cleaning supplies at the home because if you expect your guests to actually clean up after themselves, like do the dishes, um, you know, put their you know, towels and stuff in the laundry, 
this would be what you would need to do is supply them with the, with the goods that they need. Now, you're not gonna put a whole full comprehensive amount of cleaning stuff in an unsecured location where your guests could get to it because you don't want them wasting things needlessly. So your housekeeper should have like a housekeeping caddy and they roll around their housekeeping caddy and they keep it in their trunk. That's what we do for our housekeepers. Um, so roll away beds, not shown in the tour, but they fold up, they go in the closet and the best ones are memory foam, twin size ones, and they're usually about 240 bucks. And then the linens for the rollaway bed because people can't just sleep on a mattress. They need their own blanket sheets and pillows too. So that is it. That's the whole shebang. And the total, the total is $4,224 for this entire place. And it looks pretty wicked, right? Now, the reason why this was achievable is because this is a studio, not a one bedroom. If we put up a wall here, right? We need to do something more with this space to make it look more cute. We might even need to put a dinner table or a dining table if this had more square footage and we'd have more wall to work with in the bedroom and it's a lot harder that you can add a thousand bucks like that just by separating the bed from the rest of the space. That's why I like studios. You can come in, come in hot on a budget and this proves to you guys, I said 5,000 bucks to get in and you know how much money we spent to start our lease here? We picked up our lease the 15th. It is now the third, right? So we picked up our lease the 15th. We paid $700 security deposit and that was it. So add the 700 bucks in security deposit to the 20 or to the 42, 24. We spent exactly $4,924 to start our Airbnb right here. And I get four weeks for free. I haven't paid rent yet. I won't be paying rent until the 15th of this month. So we are operating startup for 5,000. I'm gonna pay half a month's rent on the 15th and then the full month's rent January 1st. And that is how you get in for 5,000 bucks or less. You'll make enough money to pay your half month's rent 15 days in, you'll, or by the 15th like mine, and you'll have enough money to pay next month's rent before January 1st comes. And then after that, you're always paying rent with future incomes and you're slowly adding that profit back into getting that you know $4,200 back. And you'll be profitable in four or five months if you do it my way. So we do have a course coming soon. You don't have to buy it because this free course we have here on YouTube is quite extensive, but if courses are your thing, a lot of people you've asked for it. So since you've asked, it's here. And those of you who want it, um, we'll be publishing the link soon. So stay tuned on that. Thank you for watching. Remember to leave a like on the video and I'm going to leave this entire list of stuff we bought in a link in the description. So if you want to fast forward and buy something like this, um, I'll make it easy for you. So thanks for watching Airbnb Automated and I'll see you on the other side. Hi.